good. Hey, it's Brett again, and I'm over here with Jeremy, and we're going to do a complete breakdown of our match down in Clash Bash in South Texas, as well as our guns and why we picked what we did for the match. Jeremy, uh, we'll start with you, man. Uh, what would you, what'd you think about the match down there? I thought the match was great. Um, it was challenging. Um, Very challenging. I had a good time. Uh, it was a high round count. I like to shoot a lot of rounds, so that was pretty important to me. Um, I didn't think I didn't think the match was impossible for new shooters. I think they tried to tailor it around trying to not only give the the guys that are been shooting a while a challenge, but to keep it to where the the newer people, you know, could still kind of compete and still feel like that they were having a good time. Yeah, I think uh, I shot it last year too, and I felt almost like it was too easy last year. I mean, it was still challenging. Don't get me wrong. But I think uh, Clay and those guys down there got some feedback saying that they needed it to be a little, um, a little more challenging without discouraging new shooters. Yeah. And I think they I agree. they hit that pretty pretty mm -hmm. much. So, um, uh, what were some of the things you saw down there that uh, you know this kind of blew your mind? Just, just the the guns. You know, there were people down there with just beautiful guns, and um, you know, if you're an AK person. You know, that's where you want to be. That's where the AKs are. Um, you know, there was lots of, you know, lots of guys running Galils, lots of guys running AKs that literally looked like they just came off the battlefield. You yeah, know? some so, of them did. Literally. So, <laughs> yeah. it was pretty neat to see, you know, how, how everybody's taste different, you know, between the guns because, you know, I just, I think AKs have kind of more of a, kind of their own soul. Yeah. And uh, I think once you find what they like, I think it just makes the gun and, so, so what what is yours like? What what explain your setup? Break that thing down. Do a uh, so so when I was ready to get back into AKs, of course I came down here to to you guys here at Ace and you know and uh, you know I said hey I'm looking to get back into AKs. I want to start shooting AKs again and you know I got with you and I was like well, what do I need and um, I was kind of looking at some lower end AKs and you talked me into buying this Testado M70. Which I am super glad that I bought this gun. Um, so I just shot the match. Uh, I shot eight stages, uh, zero malfunctions. And that uh, was a big deal. Zero misfeeds. Yeah. Uh, I had I had no uh, failures to anything. I mean, every round even went off. I yep. mean, I had no light primer strikes. Yep. Nothing. What kind of ammo were you using? Uh, mostly tool ammo and um, Red Army. Yep. Red Army. So just basic stuff. Basic stuff. Um, it ran it fine. Um, I will tell you, I, I did clean it uh, uh, for the next day. I, it's just a, a habit I do, but I did clean it. But after, it ran. But it ran. Um, so I did take it apart at one time. Um, but I got everything here, Ace. Uh, so the way you see it now, it's not configured as it was when I bought it. I kind of went a little more race gun. Um, it still has the original wood grips on it, um, original barrel and everything, but um, went with the Magpul stock because I needed some adjustability. Um, I felt like the wood stock was a little small for me. Uh, I wanted to be able to push it in and out as need to be, and this one folds, and I thought that that was a great stock. Uh, I went with the U.S. Palm grip. It uh, just feels great in the hand. It does. Those grips, guys, if you haven't seen those grips or used them on AKs, they just yeah, they work perfect. Uh, yeah, a little bit of goon tape. You know, yeah. you got to have a 
goon tape yeah. on an AK. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. Uh, put the L ALG trigger in there. Greatest AK trigger ever. Um, I always thought the, the AK magazine releases were a little small. Uh, I ended up going with a, a Polish um, paddle uh, for reloads. It's definitely a lot easier to get a hold of. Make sure magazine changes a lot quicker. Um, went with the Krebs Custom uh, Safety. Um, that is a game changer if you're in the AK world. Uh, you know, it's, it's right there on your finger. You just come down and you're already ready to fire. So it makes shooting a lot quicker. Um, especially at big stages where you just it, everything is staged. Um, Brett also hooked me up with the Otero Arms uh, optic mount. Uh, guys, I have thousands of rounds through this gun and this mount has never moved an inch. It has never come loose. My optic has never lost sight. Um, running the Hollow 7 Hollow Sun uh, 507 T 509 T yep. um, and that's been a great site got that here as well um, I'm running a K&S uh, piston got that down here as well um, I've been able to tune my gun to have it it runs this thing runs like a typewriter I mean it just runs so good it goes. It, it's smooth it's got less recoil um, and then I went of course with the J Mac uh, four point slim um, it's a great, it's a great port. Uh, it works great. Um, I did not have this bolt knob on there when I shot the match, but I've recently put it on there. Um, Those guys are cool too. Yeah. So while we were at the match, um, Texas Weapons, uh, what was it? Texas Weapons. Yep, Texas Weapons. Um, so this is their. It's called the Hob Knob. Um, it's great. It has actually three points. Uh, that goes on your your knob, so it will not come loose. Those it, those of you that that know, you'll know what I'm about to say. But if you buy a charging handle knob for your AK, it generally only has one set screw, mm -hmm. and you'll know if you got a cheap one because that thing is going to fly off in the middle of shooting it, and it's very annoying. So. Yeah, so this one has three points. It has one on the top and two on the sides, and both and the ones on the sides are offset, so it stays on pretty well. Um, that's pretty much it for my gun. Um, I, I tried to keep it simple and kind of slimline. Um, another thing uh, used was uh, just your standard Magpul mags. Yep. Um, zero malfunctions. Zero malfunctions. No issues. Uh, these are the Gen 3. They have the metal hookups. Um, they just run. I mean, they're, yeah, they're not cool Bakelite magazines from Russia, but if you're looking for functionality and if you want your gun to run and run smooth, I, we, we had zero problems with these magazines. No, no issues. Zero. zero the Magpul so. factory team was there and their own shooters obviously were using their magazines as well and they, they also had no issues. And there were a lot of other shooters there um, using Magpul mag, but um, all the, almost all of the uh, issues we saw that were mag related for firearm malfunction were due to either magazine springs being too weak or they had too many rounds in the mag or something. But these, these work great. Like Jeremy said, they're reinforced with steel on the inside and I mean on the front and on the back and throughout. So these are very nice mags. Um, I also had no issues at all with mine. Yeah, so you know, if you guys are looking to get into the AKs, these guys, man, they have so many AKs here. They, they have every flavor. Uh, you know, seven six two five five six. You know all the all the big all the big name brand guns that you can get. That they've got them here. They've got the Lills. Um, like I said, this gun came from here. Everything came from here. If they didn't have it, they ordered it for me. Um, everything came in in a timely manner, and I'm, I'm super 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 happy with the way this gun functions. 